Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and I'm gonna walk you through all the menu features that are available on the Hisense U6H. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so let's go through all these settings. At the top, you have search, and under search, you can search for different terms like they show here, and down below, you have some presets where you can find free movies, travel shows, and things like that. The next option is for you, and this is basically a list of all the different applications that it would recommend for you from TV shows to movies. But if you go down to the very bottom, there's a feature that says manage your services. So the way you would use this is that you would go in here and check off any of these services that you use. And by doing that, it's gonna recommend these type of contents on your main screen. If you don't have them, you can check them off. And that way it will not recommend those type of shows. So just give you guys an example, that's how that works. Now back to the top, we have live, and this is connected to YouTube TV. So if you pay for that service, once you press on the show, it will launch YouTube TV, but it's not gonna do it internally. Next you have movies, and this is if you wanna buy or rent movies, or if you have any of those services that I showed you before, and that's the same as the shows. Now this TV does not have a app store that says Google Play Store like you used to on your phone. These are the apps here, so you can just search for them, or you can just go down, find one that you like, press on it, and you're good to go. For example, if you want a YouTube TV and you have the service, just go ahead and press on install, and it'll go ahead and add it to your list of different applications. Before I show you more of the top screen, I want to show you this is the list of the applications. If you press and hold down the center, you get the option to open it or move it. If you move it, you just put it where you want it and let go. Now, next thing I will show you, if you look at your apps and go over to the end and hit see all, this will show you every app that's installed in this television. Now, I will tell you that some of these can be uninstalled, but other ones cannot. So you know that up front, but I'll show you how to uninstall apps in just a minute. Back up to top, you have live TV, and I will tell you that this is based off of YouTube TV. If you have that app and you're paying for it, if you click on one of these, it will launch YouTube TV, but it's not used for anything else that I noticed. You have movies where you can pay for them, and this will also show some of the services that you have, and then that's the same for TVs. Now, this TV doesn't have a app store labeled Google TV like a smartphone, so this is where you can find new applications. Down here, you can go through all these different settings, and if you wanna click on something, you just click on it and install it, and you're good to go. And at the very top, the last feature is library. And this is for things that you purchased, rented, or you have in your wish list. So we don't have to worry about that now. Now, if you move over, you're gonna find your icon. And this icon is assuming that you're already logged into a Gmail account when you set the TV up. And you can add it a kids mode, and this will automatically put in parental control, but you will need a Gmail account for that. And at the bottom is where you can add more Google accounts so everyone can have their own profile. The next one we have is settings. Now this is a lot of information. The first option is you can name your device and this is handy whenever you're casting a service to it and you can go ahead and enter your custom name like Stevens TV, for example. Next we have channels and inputs. Now under channels, you have to be on the TV uh, channel mode from your input right here where it says TV, if you don't, you won't get these options. Now under here, you can choose if you have antenna or cable. This is where you can scan for more channels, manually scan, uh, choose your primary audio source, secondary source, and video description. Next you have input mode, and this is where the CEC will turn on the TV automatically if you have like a cable box or something plugged into the HDMI. And then you have parental control, and with this lock, it'll be just like putting a TV in child's mode. Next we have display and sound. This is where you can go and adjust all your picture settings. And then at the bottom, you have advanced settings. So you can change the temperature, turn your motion rate off and on, and a few other features down here at the bottom. And there's also a calibration setting. So if you are using a calibration software, this is where you can go in and really adjust it and tweak it just a little bit more. And if you make any mistakes, there's a reset button at the bottom of all the settings for the most part. Next, we have your sound settings. And again, I'm not gonna do any demos on this video, but you see you can change your audio settings. If you have a HDMI ARC soundbar plugged in, that should light up. You have Bluetooth 
and you have Wi-Fi speakers. You also have your, you can turn your speakers off and on. There'll be Atmos. Oh, and by the way, when you have something plugged in, you can then highlight the eARC if you have Adobe Outbows audio system. Then you have wall mount settings. And this is if you plan on mounting a TV on the wall without a soundbar. And under advanced settings, you have a few more controls right here. And this is where you can change from PCM, bit rate. You have a built-in equalizer and headphone modes once you plug headphones into it. Next, we have networks. And this is where you can turn Wi-Fi off and on. If you go down here to the bottom, you can add networks. And this comes in handy for some people who have hotspots and not full Wi-Fi. You can turn on a data saving mode so it uses less data, but that can interfere with the quality of the content. Like if you're watching 4K or something, it's not gonna get enough signal in some cases. So you might turn it back off. This is where you can add more accounts. And down here you have privacy. Uh, some applications need location, so Right now, the Google is turned on and the setup wizard is turned on, but you can go down here and modify some of these settings as well. And under apps, you can see all the apps installed in the TV. Here's a list of all the apps. You have permissions and security. And another thing I want to point out inside the apps is that if it's not bloatware in the TV, you will have an uninstall button right there. And you also can disable the app if you're not using it as well, so it doesn't pop up in your main screen. So that's an option that you definitely could use. Now under system, you have accessibility, and this is where you can turn on closed captions. You also can have speech to text, so the TV talks to you, and you have a high contrast rate for people who can't see too well. Under about, this is where you can do all your system updates. You also can factory reset the television, and this is the model of the TV, the software, and uh, if you have a USB thumb drive and you had to upgrade a TV, this is how you can do it manually. Next, we have time and date. It's pretty much set up by the different uh, networks that the TV is connected to, but you can manually do that. Here we have languages, and you can change the keyboard uh, from different uh, languages as well by using these settings. Under storage, you can see this TV does have 7.3 gigabytes, which is pretty cool. And this will show you all the apps and everything that's using up so much data so you guys will know how to do that. Next we have ambient mode. So whenever you're not using this TV, you can set it up in a mode that it basically has like a picture on it. And that's cool if you have it on the wall, having friends over, but you don't wanna have content on it. You can customize all the settings here. And uh, if you have Google Photos and you're connected to the same cloud, you can go in and set this up to link to those pictures so your family pictures will appear on the wall as well. Now I'll show you an example. I have it set up at the art gallery. Over here, you can uncheck any kind of art that you don't want to see on it. And this is actually feeding through Google's cloud. So uh, if you actually don't have Wi-Fi or if you don't have a lot of data, you don't even have to use this feature, to be honest. And then I'll go ahead and start it up so you can get an example of what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. And then down here at the bottom, it will show you some uh, different things you can do while in art mode. Or if you let it sit here, that'll go away. Next, we have power and energy. You can have the TV to turn on to the Google Home screen or the last input. And I typically use the last input if you have another device connected to it, like an Apple TV or a Roku. That's where you can use that feature. You have a different timer where you can have the display to turn off if it doesn't see a signal. And then under power mode, you can turn off the standby light you also can uh, adjust the sleep timer, and there's another way to do that, and I'll show you in a minute. And you can have the TV to turn itself on or off with timers as well. Next, we have cast, and this is where you can take your smart device and you can cast it over to your television, and this is good if you pull up a YouTube video on your phone and it's connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you can send that video to the TV, and then the TV will start using its own data to stream that, plus all the controls on the remote control will work. Now under system sounds, this is where if you wanna hear clicks whenever you click on the remote control, but I, I have the volume down right now while I'm filming this video. And then under advanced system, and next we have Amazon Alexa services. Under here, if you go through your setup process, you may need your smartphone and you can go in here and use Alexa to do different uh, commands on the television, which is great. This is where you put it into store 
retail mode so you can get a nice little demo plan. Don't really recommend that unless you have it in the store. Here's where you can register the TV with Hisense. There's an online instruction manual and a few other features down here. And the last one here at the bottom is a restart. And this is different, so you just press this and it restarts the TV. Next we have remote and accessories. And this is where you can connect Bluetooth headsets to it, keyboards, anything you like. And you do have your remote control. And uh, if you need a pair, the Hisense remote control, all you need to do is hold the back button and the home button together and it'll pair your remote control with the television. Another feature I wanna show you on the remote control is this one right here. That is a separate menu button. And if you press that, you get this separate menu, which is great because you can easily get to your picture and sound settings, but it also has a gaming zone down here that you can get to for people with PlayStations, Xbox, and things like that. Now I won't go over it to this video, but I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. You just basically get some settings uh, for your gaming console. Now we'll be doing a separate video for the PlayStation and Xbox, and we'll dive into that a little bit more. Now this is crucial. If you have a 4K gaming console, you have to go in here and put it into enhanced format. If you do not, everything you plug into it is only gonna be 1080p. So just remember, hit that menu button and go change that to enhance. Next you have audio only, and this is great if you listen to a podcast or something on TV, or it's late at night and you don't want to uh, have the picture on, you can just go audio only. There's a quick button to your sleep timer. And then this is a quick way to get to some of those advanced settings that I showed you guys earlier. Next, 